Hey guys, welcome back to The Poor Investor. So today I'm going to be taking a different approach on a type of video that I'm releasing. I'm going to be talking about my personal finances and how much money I've been putting in or away for investments and the stock and real estate and all these other good things that I've been doing. I also want to mention that I will be telling you guys how much I've been making for the last year or so on youtube which isn't a hell of a whole lot so i am struggling i am that struggling youtuber that you guys all read about all right i'm not near anything making tons of money off of youtube if anything i probably end up getting a couple of mcdonald meals for the month what i do want to go over first is i've been watching this podcast about kosher money i found it so intriguing and so informative that it really triggered me to make this video what i wanted to actually talk about is how relatable the information that was given on this channel to the individuals like yourself and i now i call myself the poor investor is because most of the times if you look in my wallet i probably only have a few dollars and even then i'm reluctant to spend it because i can find better use for my money a lot of you guys probably have joked or I know even on Twitter, one of the Chia guys was saying, jokingly or not, was saying that, you know, maybe if you knew more about this, you wouldn't be so such a poor investor. Well, I have that name for a reason. Now I'm cash poor. I do currently sit on six rental properties. Half of those are multifamily. So I'm generating rental income. But of course, you have to pay your property tax, your mortgage and your insurances and all the maintenance upkeep of it. All right. Even though there's renters in there paying their rent. So you probably expect to get like about, you know, two, three hundred each door. All right. Out of the from the six properties i actually have 10 doors because a couple of them are multi-units so from each door i probably get at the end of the month maybe about like two three hundred dollars of profit all right so obviously the more properties you buy the more headaches that come with it but your profits will grow with that so that's one avenue of what i actually do with my money is investing in real estate now what i do for my day job is that i work for a company that actually has a pension i contribute about six percent into that pension that's automatically that's not even by choice and then on top of that there's a retirement program in the company and i contribute another six percent on top of that so just from working my nine to five alone i have about 12 percent going into my retirement fund so that's one i contribute 12 percent of my money that I earn from my nine to five into a retirement and pension fund. Two, on top of that, I actually have a Roth IRA that I've been contributing the full $6,000 since the beginning of time that I can even remember for like decades already. Up until more recently, a lot of my funds have been going into that. I opened up one for my wife. I opened up one for my child, which I hold a custodian account for him and i contribute a decent amount into there as well now you're probably getting a better idea of why am i the poor investor because all my money is going into my retirement funds and real estate i haven't even touched any of the stuff that i've been buying and the coins that i've been investing in in crypto but i'll get to that in a little bit so let me just explain with my roth ira i've been contributing all that so six six that's $12,000 just between my wife and myself and my son I haven't maxed out yet but here and there I'll probably put in a couple of dinner meals like going out meals a couple hundred dollars here a couple hundred dollars there so it's, it's it's accumulating I do buy a lot of dividend stocks and the dividends that get paid out for those actually get redistributed back into buying more shares of the company all right so that's two three I also have a speculation traders account that I have a good portion of my money in there as well and maybe one day i'll show you guys the full details of all the numbers that i actually have but right now i'm just giving you a general idea of what i'm actually doing with my money to be called the poor investor now it's not that i'm not making money from it it's just that i don't have money to do anything else really i mean i still go on vacation and do all the things it's just i minimize that to as much as i can so would that be three? Me having a speculation account would probably categorize as three, right? So I have, you know, an account that I buy meme stocks and I trade meme stocks. I'm not a day trader by any means. So what I've learned so far within the last year is that I stepped away from the whole 
meme trading and day trading and trying to buy low sell high kind of aspect than just buying and holding i believe it's a lot stressful that way and a lot easier to approach than getting into investments so that's three now four i do have a few trading accounts as far as crypto coinbase kucoin and i did buy a lot of speculation including bitcoin and litecoin ethereum it's all fun and games when you're bullish and you're winning and you're you're earning each day when you start seeing your income diminish or your profits diminish it's you know becomes a harder thing to deal with and you're wondering that you could have been doing something better with the money opposed to spending it all on buying speculation crypto coins now the other thing i kind of regret sometimes but it's a little too late for that i still have the hardware and i could still resell it but most of the times you're not going to resell it for much of a profit especially in this market now of course you can see all that i have a bunch of gpus in there i have a bunch of cpus right now most of them are turned off this gpu right now it's not even mining i was lucky and fortunate enough to have subscribers like yourself to donate some of these hard drives and enclosures to me you know someone even donated like a full cpu i even had red panda mining donate like a gpu to me and you know that's awesome you know that that means the world to me let me just show you guys really quick like some of the earnings that i've gotten for the you know within the last year on youtube it's not a lot i mean you can see right here since so six months ago since january i've been you know it was hot for a minute then february i kind of slowed down i didn't put out videos back to back and then i was like oh no i'm losing money so let me just try again in march and april and I was pushing out these videos and it's very selective because, you know, some videos just get more views than others. And some videos just don't do too well. So they don't obviously make enough for the CPM, which is like $12.76. This is what my average is. So my RPM is $4.99. You can see that June is still ongoing. It's at $88. And my top earning videos for the last 28 days is like 10, 12 bucks. So... It's not too far off from the CPM and I'm, it's not making a hell of a whole lot. You know, a lot of people say YouTube is a long game. It is in a way if you're willing, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. If you're willing to kind of put your efforts and time into it and then editing it. And especially if you don't have anyone really helping you, it makes it just that much harder sometimes. And there are days now, if you haven't noticed, I've been kind of putting my videos every other day now opposed to every single day every single day was just kind of getting too hectic all right uh the one thing that i actually been doing is putting a lot of money into the spy etf all right and that just basically follows the trend of the market throughout every single day every single year as companies grow and prosper this spy will adjust for that so a lot of words can be spoken about spy but the short answer of it all is that because it's been so difficult for the top trading firms or hedge funds to even beat this S&P 500, you know, SPY is like the easiest thing to get into to put your, your long-term investments if you're willing to let it sit there for 10, 20, 30 years. And that's what I've been doing for my children because I know I don't have to manage it. I don't have to look at it as often and I'll just let it ride and see what happens, you know, when they turn of age to take that money out. I myself still have a lot of stocks in technology and a lot of blue chip stocks. And of course, like I said, I'll go into another video going deeper into some of the stocks that I look into and purchase because I feel like there is some stability there, not just all crypto and speculations. Of course, here we have Chia's price of $30.46, which has been holding up pretty well in comparison to the rest of the market so far. But we're not going to be talking too much about Chia. This is the channel that I was talking about that really got me thinking more because I'm always in search on YouTube for like motivational videos and financial videos. A lot of the finance videos that I watch sometimes just seem too hype and too crazy going and there's a lot of things going on and a lot of noise. I learned how to say this correctly. Living a climb, la climb is living life. That's basically what this means, living life. And there was this one video in particular, I started off on a series before I even was subscribed because YouTube suggested it to me was this video right here. Wanna invest like a millionaire. And this individual right here, because I, I don't know how to say his name, Horowitz. I don't know how to say his first name, but his last name Horowitz was very inspiring and very intelligent and just straight to the point. And he was talking about just traditional investments to grow your wealth 
for yourself and for your family, which is like the meaning of life to me right now for myself and for my family and for my kids, especially when they get older and I'm no longer here. I want them to carry on something. Now, I don't know if they can carry on my Bitcoins or my XCHs or whatever else that I've been mining for the last year or so. I don't think that transition is going to happen so soon where everything goes into crypto. You're not going to lose your blue chip stocks. You're not going to lose your technology stocks, especially what you own if they're still around, right? Without the technology and without the blue chips, that's like the circle of life, right? The technology revolves around that. And there's other commodities, of course, but I don't invest in that, but I just invest in the technology stuff and also the blue chips. Now, blue chips can be everything and anything to food, you know, necessities and things like that. So in short, what I'm trying to say and explain to you guys is that be mindful of where you put your money. Don't throw everything into right now. What's the hottest thing? Like I'm not putting tens of thousands of dollars into mining or farming you know, any type of crypto or buying these expensive NFTs. Although some of you guys may believe in the technology and the future of it, that's fine if you can afford to. I also want to be securing myself with the money that I have and building out the wealth, even though it's a little slower than earning, you know, a couple of hundred thousand dollars at the end of the week with day trading or buying NFTs or you know, speculating on the next crypto hype. So what I'm trying to really say with the name, the poor investor, what it really means is that a lot of my money goes into my investments and my wealth building. So in short, if you would have asked me to borrow five or $10, I really don't have it because I really don't have anything in my pockets most of the times. And that's why you could probably call me the poor investor. And that's probably the most logical reason that you can call me the poor investor because you know that I invest in all these different things, but I don't even have $5 to lend out. That's how sad it is sometimes. You know, sometimes we could go out and we're driving and we make a pit stop to buy, uh, you know, buy breakfast for myself and the kids. I would personally, even if I gave my, my wife 20 bucks to go buy the breakfast, I would tell her, not to get me anything besides like a dollar cup of co a, a cup of coffee that's worth a dollar because I want her to splurge on my kids. I could skip a meal and save that money for my wife to get a better breakfast meal for my kids. And I have three of them. All right. I want to thank you guys for being here and listening to me and hope you guys enjoy this because I, it's just reality kicking in sometimes. And it's not all about the hype and the game and me buying more hardware, which I will be doing occasionally. And of course, this is not the type of videos that is going to be coming out that often. But I do like talking about it and I hope you guys enjoy it because, you know, sometimes we look at dumb money because sometimes you have to look at your wealth, your money and your finances from a different point of view, because you can't just keep taking whatever you earn or make and start putting it back into something that may not prosper. You have to kind of diversify all that. And I think I went through a good amount of what I actually have and own. And maybe I'm missing a few, but I'll probably do another video to cover everything in more details as we're progressing on, because I do want to keep this YouTube channel as a poor investor so you guys can relate to me. All right, guys, I want to thank you for being here. Please remember to hit that like, comment and subscribe, and I'll see you guys again soon.